Hello everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to introduce Supplier Link to you today. Now before we dive in, I want to set the scene. Imagine you are in charge of procurement for a large organization. Let's say NBA six-time championship team, the Golden State Warriors. Imagine every day feels like a battle as you juggle supplier relationships, negotiate contracts, and mitigate risk on a daily basis. But despite your best efforts, you face constant roadblocks, cost overruns, missed deadlines, and unexpected supply chain disruptions. It's like playing whack-a-mole. You solve one problem and three more pop up in its place. No matter how hard you work though, there, are, there seems to be always something slipping through the cracks. That was my reality not too long ago. I spent years in the trenches of procurement, grappling with these challenges, and let me tell you, it was beyond frustrating to manage. I often questioned why were we still dealing with outdated manual processes in a world that is becoming increasingly digital and interconnected. I knew there had to be a better way. Then one day, it dawned on me, with the rise of big data and advancements in AI, now you have the tools to evolutionize how we manage supplier relationships and mitigate risk in the supply chain. So from the frustration of navigating the complexities of procurement and supply chain management, I saw the potential to leverage technology and create a solution that could streamline supplier data management, provide real-time insights, and empower businesses to make better and smarter procurement decisions. That's where the idea for Supplier Link was born. Businesses face challenges as we're living in a time of unprecedented complexity and volatility, volatility in supply chain. From natural disasters to geopolitical tensions to global pandemics, organizations face more risk than ever before. The traditional approaches to procurement and supply chain management no longer are sufficient. They're slow, inefficient, reactive, and quite frankly, holding a lot of businesses back. Our solution is to develop Supplier.ai, a indirect procurement data analytics platform for supplier relationship and risk management, ultimately leading to improved efficiencies, reduced cost, and enhanced competitiveness for businesses. Our solution is targeted towards mid-sized companies, uh, mid-sized to large-sized companies that rely on third-party supplier relationships to operate. This includes everything from manufacturing companies to retailers to healthcare providers. In short, if you have third-party suppliers, supplier.ai can help you. The procure tech market is projected to reach 13 billion in spend by 2029, with more than one half of businesses spending 10 million on procurement and supply chain technology annually. While our platforms may offer similar features as our competition, what sets us apart is our strategic focus on supplier relationship and risk management. Unlike our competitors, we prioritize data analytics, proactive risk mitigation, and empowering businesses to stay ahead of potential supply chain disruptions while being highly scalable and affordable. Since, since founding supplier so since founding Supplier, we've achieved several key milestones. We are a hub and SBE certified diverse supplier. We have secured three strategic partnerships, and we've developed a cutting edge platform that centralizes supplier data, provides real time analytics, and we go live officially May 1st, 2024. Our business model is based on a SaaS subscription revenue model. Customers pay a monthly or annual fee based on the features and usage they require. Additionally, we offer premium service such as consulting and implementation support. For added fee, we can also earn revenue from reselling software partner add-ons. Our platform integrates seamlessly with existing systems and workflows, consolidating supplier data into centralized dashboards. From there, users can access real-time insights, track supplier performance, and identify risk. Our AI power algorithms analyze historical data and patterns to predict and mitigate supply chain disruptions before they occur. My name is Avanda Anderson. I'm the founder. 
I have over a decade of experience in procurement and acquisitions management. I hold a master's degree in procurement management from Webster University, an undergrad in business, and professional certifications in supplier diversity and project management. I am also a published author, a one-time NBA champion with the Golden State Warriors, and I am a recording artist. And along with my team of industry experts and analysts and software engineers, we are passionate about evolutionizing procurement and supplier relationship management. Finally, we're seeking investment to fuel our growth and scale our operations, expand our sales and marketing efforts, hire additional team members, and further develop our platform. Thank you. All right. Uh, first, it's always hard to go first, so appreciate you doing so. Um, I, I'm just going to start by saying, like, you checked. You're one of the few people I've ever seen come here and check every one of the things I'm looking for in a pitch. So usually when people come and do it the first time, I've got holes. I have a, a, a chart that I create to see if I get the information I need, and it's usually full of holes. Some of that's because they don't get to it in six minutes. Sometimes that's because they don't know that it's supposed to be in there. But I'll just say, like, good job. You have every piece of information that I want in underwriting in the pitch. Um, so that's, that's great. I, it's, a little, it's a little bit out of order than how I usually would hear the story told. So I'm happy to give you a little bit of a script of what I'm used to seeing. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd say the only... The only two like pieces of feedback that, that I had in there. Um, well, actually, I do have one question. Like, is there a, is there a beachhead market for you? Because people who have third party suppliers is like almost everyone to some degree. So, who who is it that you think that you can go to day one and start to to generate sales from? Yeah, we're looking at um, older companies, um, primarily with um, 50 to $100 million in revenue. Um, that's pretty much been my target of companies. I have two uh, companies that I'm working with here in the Charlotte area, which is uh, Train Technologies as well as Service Solutions. Um, so they're going to be one of the first to pilot the program when it's ready. Um, so they're big, large manufacturing companies. Um, they have old procurement practices, um, and so they're looking to digitize their uh, processes. Okay. But from an industry vertical, there's not like you want to start agnostic. retail or this or, okay, um, gotcha. Um, yeah, so the only, like I'd say, the only kind of pieces of feedback, one is it felt a little like your lead in. The, I like the fact that you kind of put me in there, but it felt a little long to get to the, the next step. So your lead in of telling me the story of how you kind of got here for a six minute pitch was probably a little too much of the six minutes. Um, so there's an opportunity to, to pull that down. And then as you practice the pitch more, one of the things that I, I'm always looking for like body cues or other cues of expertise. And one of the cues of expertise is someone who can just stand up here and tell me the story freely as if like they've known it for years, yeah. right? Uh, which I guarantee you do, and, and I know that you, you mentioned that you're nervous, but when you're giving a pitch, one of the biggest things that I pick up on is when someone just stands up here and just like tells me the story, like it's just flowing out of them, I infer a level of expertise that's different than when they're kind of reading the story to me. Uh, if that makes sense, almost like someone could prepare notes for me and I could read it, but if I just give up here and give it, it's like, oh, that person's an expert. And so that's just, that's one of these weird cues that guys like us pick up on where we look at it and we're like, huh, I wonder if that's researched or something that they inherently know. So as you kind of give it over time, like try to move away from, from the cards. But overall, I mean, like I said, I think you might be the first person who's ever given me every piece of information that I'm usually looking for. So great job. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Echo Chris's sentiment, Ivana. Great, great job pitching. I know it's tough to be first, and you, yeah, you did a great job. Um, huge, huge market here, right? This this applies, like Chris said, to almost every every company. I think my my comments were, and a lot of this is you need to tell it the way you want to tell it, the way we're used to hearing it. Again, don't. <laughs> love to tell the story like i would put the team slide first like knowing that you lived this we love to invest in companies where this is an experience you personally felt 
you saw the gaps and you want to go kind of solve it. So maybe, you know, kind of start with that, tell, you know, your story, hey, why are you the best person to do this? Okay. Um, I understand it now. I'm just saying kind of, you know, re reorganize it in the, in the deck. I would also maybe, I don't know if you can, dig down one deeper layer in kind of the, the ICP. Like who, you, you talk about 50 to $100 million revenue businesses, but maybe give an example. You don't have to say the name of it, but here's the example. Here's what they are doing today. Here's what I think my software can do for them. Okay. Um, you know, something like that. Really kind of make it, um, again, just because this is a, a huge market. And the last piece of advice I'll give you is a little bit controversial but applicable here. I, I tell a lot of entrepreneurs at this stage, everybody wants to be serving a big market, right? Hey, your market's not big enough. I, I hate when VC, I think VCs are the worst at saying, ah, the market size wasn't big enough. If anybody questions you on the size of your market, you should probably walk away. Like this is a huge market right there. Like you put up all the competitors. Yeah. My advice is gonna be go narrow and deep. Figure out, Chris kind of hit on this, figure out, I mean, you like literally kind of craft your little niche here, and I don't know what it is, it's type of companies, it's geography, it's something, but craft your niche and go really deep and kind of service the five or ten first customers kind of in that niche. It'll be so much easier to broaden out later. One of the biggest mistakes every entrepreneur makes is thinking they can start out super broad and they just try to boil the ocean and it just, it, it, it's hard. So um, my question to you is, can you talk a little bit about where you are from a, uh, from a tech and product perspective? Like is it, is it being built now? Is it, are you looking for the money to hire the people to, to start building it? Where, where, where are you along the kind of tech and product journey? Yeah, so I couldn't wait. Uh, so I bootstrapped uh, and raised money to develop myself. So we're actually in finishing up testing um, of the platform to make sure we have like data integrations to our third party uh, data providers. Uh, we go live with the platform um, April, May 1st. Um, so it'll be fully functional April 29th. I'll be in Las Vegas presenting to the Institute Supply Chain Management um, Conference. So I'll be there in front of 2,000, 3,000 procurement practitioners launching my MVP. So I hope that it doesn't blow up, but uh, even if it does, at least I, I did something. So, yeah. <laughs> That should, that should go into your deck. Like, I had no idea. I wouldn't have taken away, like, you were that far along. Like, yeah. the product is getting ready to be GA. That's yeah. awesome. No. I, I think to, to echo on that, if you can find out, if you can find out if you can disclose this, I would love for there to almost be a, this is train and how they're using what we're doing. Because I think to that same end, train's a big name. This is a huge company with, I'm guessing, a relatively complex supply chain, right? They manufacture a lot of really big and heavy products. And so if there's an opportunity to highlight that a little bit within the, I would almost say that's maybe one of your better traction slides of we're in a pilot or paid pilot or whatever it is with train, and this is how they're using it. And um, that would help me understand the product a little bit, as well as, um, underwriting kind of that customer. Okay. Um, what about folks in the audience? Any any questions? I know we've got a, looks like we have a minute or so left. Yeah. Do you have anybody besides, I mean, do you have people set up, like he mentioned train, but do you have anybody that's going to give you feedback and start it on March or May 1st? Yes, we have two, uh, another company so that will be, okay. there. there's two, um, Best Sign, well, we have LOIs with them, okay. <laughs> so yeah. And then, of course, I did do a peer um, research uh, extensively before I even start building. So I got really practice, actual practical use. Okay. Awesome. With that, thank you, Yvonne. Yeah, thank you.